Let's have a look at question 7 in this video. So, a economy produces two goods, food and clothing, with two inputs, capital and labor. Now, the marginal rate of technical substitution between capital labor in food production is 4, while the MRTS in clothing is 2. Is this economy efficient? And how can we get to a Pareto improvement? Okay, so let's write this data. The marginal rate of technical substitution in the food production equals to 4 whereas the marginal rate of technical substitution in clothing production equals to 2. Now, let's work out with the math a bit to understand what's happening here. Recall the marginal rate of te technical substitution between capital and labor is the exchange rate at which companies are willing to trade capital for labor while keeping production the same. So in the case of the food company, if we do a cross product, actually, sorry, no cross product yet, let's just write the marginal rate of technical substitution first. The change in the capital for the food company relative to the change in the labor for the food company, the exchange between capital and labor equals to 4, whereas the change in the capital of the clothing company relative to the change of the labor of the clothing company equals to 2. Now let's work a bit with the cross product and see what this means. If we do a cross product here, that means that the change in the capital of the food company equals to four times the change in the labor of the food company. Whereas in this case, if we do a cross product, we would have that the change in the capital of the clothing company equals to two times the change in the labor of the clothing company. Now, suppose, suppose that food, the food company would like to exchange one unit of labor. So if this thing is equal to one unit, I'm sorry, one unit of capital. If the food company is willing to exchange one unit of capital, how much labor must, must it give up? Well, that would equal to one over four units of labor because four times one over four is going to equal to one. So in other words, in other words, one unit of capital for the food company is equivalent, is worth one over four units of labor for the food company. Hope this makes sense. Now with the same logic, let's do the math over here for the clothing company. To get one unit of capital for the clothing company, it must give up one over two units of labor because two times one over two is going to equal to one here as well. So in other words, one unit of capital for the clothing company is worth one over two units of labor for the clothing company. What do we see here? We see that both the food company and the clothing company values values labor more than capital at that specific point because it's willing for instance the food company is willing to exchange only a fourth unit of labor instead of one unit of capital and here the clothing company is willing to exchange only a half unit of labor for one unit of capital so because it's willing to exchange less labor for capital it means it value is more it puts more value on the labor it's more productive for them to keep the labor now let's compare between them, between the food and the clothing, see if that's in equilibrium yet. We can see that the food company values labor more than how clothing company values labor. Why? Because the food company is willing to give up only a fourth unit of labor, whereas the clothing company is willing to give up a half unit of labor. So 1 over 4 is less than 1 over 2, meaning the food company is valuing a bit more the labor than the clothing company. Intuitively, this gives a possibility for trade. And let's see how the trade will happen. Because because the food company values labor more than how the clothing company does, intuitively we could say that it would be wise for the clothing company to give some of that labor to the food company in exchange for capital because the food company is more needing it, is more uh, wanting it. So let's see how, how that would work out. If the food company gives one unit of capital to the to the uh, clothing company and the clothing company in return is giving one over two units of labor because that's how much is worth to it the unit of capital so it's giving one over two units of labor in return now what does that mean let's see well one over two units of labor but the food company requires only one over four units of labor one over two units of labor is twice as much because what's one over two one over two equals two 1 over 4 units of labor plus another 1 over 4 units of labor. Since the food company only requires 1 over 4 units of labor in exchange for 1 unit of capital and it's getting 1 over 4 units of labor 
plus another one over four units of labor by definition because it has an additional an additional uh, labor and an additional one over four unit of labor it means this is a Pareto improvement it's getting more than what it requires so Pareto improvement the ISO quant of the food company the ISO quant of the food company is increasing is going on a higher level without hurting without hurting the ISO quant the ISO quant of the labor of the clothing company because the la the clothing company is not hurt it's still getting its own unit of capital that it required in exchange for the half unit of labor so the ISO quant of the of the clothing company is still intersecting both ISO quants of the food company it's still keeping the same production level while the food company is better off and being better off without hurting anyone is called a Pareto improvement and that's what we had to describe a Pareto improvement and we did hope this makes sense we are done